हेलो एवरीवन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी एपेंडिशियल म्यूसिनस लीजन्स द म्यूसिनस लीजन्स ऑफ एपेंडिक्स दीज आर रेयर लीजन्स सो टुडेज टॉपिक इज एपेंडिशियल म्यूसिनस लीजन्स अकॉर्डिंग टू पेरिटोनियल सरफेस ऑंकोलॉजी ग्रुप इंटरनेशनल पेरिटोनियल सरफेस ऑंकोलॉजी ग्रुप इंटरनेशनल द एपेंडिशियल म्यूसिनस लीजन्स दे आर क्लासीफाइड एज non neoplastic appendicial mucinous lesions and neoplastic appendicial mucinous lesions so basically by psogi they are classified in two groups non neoplastic and neoplastic mucinous lesions the non neoplastic appendicial mucinous lesions there are retention cysts or simple mucosids so under the non neoplastic mucinous lesions important is retention cyst these are rare cysts present in the cerosal surface of appendix so the characteristic feature in this is degenerative epithelial changes due to obstruction example due to fecolith and distension without any evidence of mucosal hyperplasia or neoplasia so the mucosa is neither hyperplastic or nor there any changes of neoplasia it is also known as inflammatory or obstructive mucosids so under the non neoplastic category we have simple mucosids or retention cysts these retention cysts are rare then the neoplastic appendicial mucinous lesions under this category we have three lesions serrated polyps of the appendix so first is polyp serrated polyps of the appendix second is mucinous appendicial neoplasms they are further divided into low grade appendicial mucinous neoplasm and high grade app appendicial mucinous neoplasms and third is mucinous adenocarcinoma of appendix so neoplastic mucinous lesions they are serrated polyps mucinous appendicial neoplasms further lamns and hamns low grade mucinous neoplasms and high grade mucinous neoplasms so as mucinous appendicial neoplasms they secrete mucin pools of mucin but they the pools are usually acellular so mucin pools are acellular this mucin is produced by the dysplastic mucinous epithelium so there is presence of dysplastic lining epithelium that produces abundant mucin that too is acellular there is expensile growth with pushing border and lack overt infiltration and confined by the muscularis propria then coming to mucinous adenocarcinomas of appendix they are defined as invasive glands containing high grade cytologic atp and extracellular mucins making up to more than 50% of the cross sectional area of lesion under the microscope so if invasion is present if invasive glands are present with cytologic atp it is mucinous adenocarcinoma of appendix so po gi classified the appendicial mucinous lesions into two category non neoplastic and neoplastic non neoplastic are simple mu mucosils or retention cyst neoplastic are serrated polyps of appendix with or without dysplasia then mucinous appendicial neoplasms lamns hamns and mucinous adenocarcinomas so first of all we are going to discuss about retention cyst or simple mucosils retention cysts these are rare cysts and 
etiology is chronic luminal obstruction with secondary cystic expansion of the appendix distal to the level of obstruction due to the contained mucin secretion by the mucosal epithelium so cause is chronic luminal obstruction leading to secondary cystic expansion grossly the gallbladder lumen is distended and it is filled with mucin if cyst is larger we can appreciate grossly on external surface the cysts are usually less than 2 cm few centimeters to 2 cm microscopically the epithelial lining of simple mucosal is normal that is it lacks the dysplasia as we have already discussed there is no hyperplasia or neoplastic changes or dysplastic changes so epithelial lining is normal the epithelial lining may show flattening due to increased intraluminal pressure so the cyst wall may be lined by cuboidal to columnar to flatten lining epithelium or it may either be lined by macrophages and inflammatory cells only macrophages and inflammatory cells if there is complete effacement or destruction of the mucosal epithelium or mucin extrusion into the wall so these are the microphotographs the low power view showing the wall of the appendix in this the serosal surface on the serosal surface you can see two cysts one is larger other is smaller these are the mucus retention cysts the cyst is filled with mucin and some inflammatory cells this is the hyper view of cyst wall cyst the cyst wall is lined by macrophages these are macrophages and the inflammatory cells chronic inflammatory infiltrate so in this case the mucosal lining is completely effaced or it is destroyed by the mucin so it is lined by the macrophages and inflammatory cells now the low grade mucinous neoplasms low grade mucinous neoplasms they are the true neoplasms with dysplastic epithelium so characteristic finding is dysplastic lining that produces abundant mucin and characteristically exhibits expansile growth with pushing border this pushing border is important while in adenocarcinomas we have infiltrating borders which may or may not cause loss of muscular components of the wall and mural fibrosis there is always lack of overt infiltrative epithelial invasion of the epithelial wall and are confined by the muscularis propria the mucin dissection may be seen in the muscle or on the serosa but that mucin is acellular so lamns they are true neoplasm with dysplastic epithelium that produces abundant mucins this is the microphotograph showing lamn in this you can see the dysplastic lining epithelium that produce the mucin this is pools of mucin acellular pools of mucin you can see the pushing border it is pushing the muscle wall push pushing the muscularis propria next is high grade appendicial neoplasms they are distinguishable from low grade appendicial neoplasms only by the degree of epithelial dysplasia in this case also there is dysplastic lining but the degree of dysplasia is higher high grade dysplastic changes include the cribriform growth nuclear stratification nuclear overlapping pleomorphic cells hyperchromasia and abundant mitotic activity
also high grade dysplastic changes are seen in HAMNS but they lack aggressive feature of overt malignancy that is of adenocarcinoma and lack the infiltrative invasion that too is seen in adenocarcinoma. Now coming to American Joint Committee on Cancer Staging of LAMNS and HAMNS. So first staging of low grade appendicial neoplasms, low grade mucinous neoplasms they are if they are confined to appendicial wall without invasion or loss of muscularis propria then it is TIS in situ. T1 and T2 they are not used for LAMNS. T3 involvement with either mucin or mucinous epithelium of the sub -serosa. If sub -serosa is involved then T3. If serosa is involved and acellular mucin involving appendicial serosa or meso appendix then it is T4. So either mucin or mucinous epithelium in serosa it is T4. Only mucin, if only mucin is present in serosa or meso appendix, then it is T4. M1 is further categorized as M1A, M1B, and M1C. Mucin involvement of distant peritoneal site is M1. M1A is peritoneal dissemination limited to acellular mucin only. M1B is metastasis confined to peritoneum only. And 1C is metastasis outside the peritoneum. Thank you.